We'll do a quick run through with the pulse waveforms. In order to do a pulse waveform, select square wave. And we'll go back and turn on our uh, time display here so we see the square wave. Now we're going to set the duty cycle. So shift duty cycle and it's at 50% and we're going to dial this down to 20%. Now remember on the sync function if you have a duty cycle of 20% that's a ratio of one-fifth. Now what we expect to see on the waveform we see the one-fifth duty cycle. If we go to the FFT display what we see is that every fifth harmonic, which is the one over the duty cycle ratio, right, goes away. So we have fundamental, second, third, fourth, fifth is low, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth is low, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth is low, and on up. And that's because the sync function, the sine of x over x, if x becomes pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, which occurs at the harmonic, the duty cycle ratio, 5th, 10th, 15th, that, that becomes the sign of pi or 2 pi or 3 pi, and the amplitude drops out. Likewise, if we set up for 25% duty cycle, which is 1 over 4, we would expect to see every fourth harmonic disappear. And sure enough, fundamental second, third, fourth is gone, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth is gone, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, and on up. So you can take some measurements on those values. There's a handout at the end of the lab that allows you to record harmonics up to the twentieth harmonic actually up to the 19th because the 20th is the edge of the screen. So record those values in dB volts at the kilohertz values and then you can convert them to numbers to compare with your book. After you've done a waveform like the 33% um, or one quarter, one fifth, one third, try something like a 40% um, uh, a duty cycle. Now, a 40% duty cycle waveform is not an 1 over an integer value. It's, but if we look at the ratio, 40% is 2 over 5. So the fifth harmonic is where the sync function will become a ratio that is pi related. So if we look at the display, we see fundamental, second, third, fourth, fifth is gone. 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th is gone. So even though it's not a ratio that is, is exactly 1 over an integer, the ratio is 2 fifths now. If we take 1 over that, that becomes 5 halves. And so every fifth harmonic will go to 0. So any ratio that is an integer ratio and one of the numbers is prime, then that harmonic, the denominator, is the harmonic that will go to zero in successive values. Now, other things that we can do with the ARB generator and the FFT analyzer. We can look at some very unique waveforms. Now I'm going to switch over our display to back to time domain to look at a couple unique waveforms. The first one is the sync waveform. Now we have seen the sync waveform in the calculations of harmonics, but we can actually create a sync waveform in time. If we look, if we press Shift ARB, you can see that you can select various waveforms. And the sync is one of the waveforms available. Um, negative ramps are available, exponential rises, exponential falls and the cardiac signal. So we will look at both a few of these. Let's look at the sync first. Once you have the display, the waveform displayed, simply press enter. We look at this, we auto scale and we see the sync waveform. 
but it's repeated in time. All right? So now we can set that up. So there's our sync waveform. If we want to scroll in, we, we see the sync waveform. So this is very convenient, uh, and it would be interesting to see what this looks like in the time dom in the frequency domain. So first, make sure you have at least five of them displayed. Go back to our math function in FFT, and let's turn off the uh, time display. And what we see is something very interesting. Let's check our settings again. And here, the settings, the center is 100 kilohertz, and the span is 200 kilohertz. So 100 here, so that means that's about 20, not 30, 40, 60, 80. Now we see something going on on here, but it's a little hard to display. So we're going to zoom in on that by changing to a span or a center of 25 kilohertz. So we adjust the knob to be 25 kilohertz. That moves the display to the right. Takes a little bit to dial in there. No worries though. Just takes a little time. Now we're at 25 kilohertz is now our center. Span is 200. We want that to be 50. Now there we see 50 kilohertz span. 25 kilohertz center, so 0 to 50 kilohertz. Now what we see is we see a bunch of harmonics, fundamental in the harmonics, up to about 20 kilohertz and then it drops down. This is a demonstration of what we call time frequency connection in that waveforms in the time domain, in this case the sync waveform, becomes a pulse in the frequency domain. Just as pulses we saw in the time domain had sync functions in their harmonics. So this is the time frequency duality that pulses in the time domain look like sync functions in the frequency domain and likewise sync function in the time domain looks like a pulse in the frequency domain. This duality between time and frequency is very important in upper level studies. Now another signal we'll, we'll look at is the R cardiac signal. We saw that before in the ARB list. So let's go to ARB list and select the cardiac signal. Now the cardiac signal is a very complicated signal in the time domain. Let's turn off our frequency domain so we won't see it anymore. And we'll trigger this so we can see the five signals like we are used to seeing. All right, so now we've got three signals, five signals. Now, it, the um, actual parts of the waveform are associated with valves within your heart opening and closing and pushing the blood through your vessels. There, if you research it, there's P waves, Q waves, R, S, and T waves that are associated with each one of these little functions. All right, and now we'll go to the frequency domain. Now we see a very complicated waveform in the frequency domain. Lots of odds and even harmonics, and then it starts to fall off around maybe the 25th harmonic or so but it continues even more because as we can look we can see this narrow pulse is going to cre create quite a bit of frequency content. So now the signal we're using is at a frequency of one kilohertz which is of course would be equivalent to a thousand beats per second. That's obviously not what your heart is doing. Your heart's doing about maybe a somewhere between one and two beats per second or 60 or so beats per minute. But the frequency scaling of the cardiac signal would tell us that based upon this period that would be related to the fundamental frequency. Alright, so we can study both 
fast waveforms and slow waveforms. Now the next signal we're going to look at is a unique one. And this is the noise signal. So under the noise signal is one of the buttons. If we press noise and we can look at the signal in time. That is what a noise signal looks like in time. All right, it has no period. If we zoom in on it, it seemingly does not change because noise is a random event and whether we look at it in the wide domain or the narrow, it, we don't see much change. Now this is not a perfect noise signal. A perfect sig noise signal, we would see the randomness at all points, but we certainly see the randomness there. If we go to the frequency domain, zoom in a little bit, we will see that we have a lot of frequency content. Press our FFT again. So now our 25 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz, we have, but we have frequency content all across the band. This is so-called white noise or broadband noise. Now this is interestingly, uh, interesting enough that it would be useful to look at it on the uh, on the spectrum analyzer since that's the unit we've used to look at white frequency signals. So here we're going to mount our spectrum analyzer in the system and I've already got it set up for a lower frequency arrangement so we'll look at the spectrum analyzer display. The span is set to be 100 megahertz and the center frequency is essentially zero. There's our zero indicator in the middle. If we connect this in, all of this is the broadband noise. If I zoom in, we see lots of frequency content, essentially what we saw on the FFT analyzer, right? Lots of frequencies, broadband. Now this is wideband noise. Now no noise source is good for all frequencies and we see that as the span is increased eventually the noise starts to fall off because it would take infinite amount of energy for all frequencies. But certainly up to the frequencies we're looking at, in this case up to uh, 5 megahertz, we have many frequencies involved. So that's the lab. There's an optional part if you'd like to try it, playing with the download of a signal, but I'll leave that up to you if you want to try that. See you in the morning.